So, welcome to this short video on Saturn's rings and some of Saturn's moons. So the question here is, are there moons inside Saturn's rings? Well, if we have a look at Saturn and its ring system, even if you're looking from Earth with a fairly small telescope, you can see that it's not uniform. There are gaps in it. And the Cassini division is probably the main one you can see right in the center, but also there's much finer scale gaps there. So what is actually causing them? Well, there's a few things that actually can cause these gaps. So you have all of these moons orbiting outside the rings. So you've got Titan's its biggest moon, you've got Enceladus, you've got lots of different moons. They're all orbiting outside of Saturn's rings. And we'll do another video to have a look at these, but these are actually causing orbital resonances that can cause a gap in the ring. So they're all orbiting outside of the ring. But there are actually some moons that orbit within inside the rings. So Daphnis here is a moon that is orbiting inside the ring, and you can see it there to the to the right. And it's inside this very small gap. So what happens there is the moon is actually creating that gap as it orbits around inside the ring. And that gap is actually related to how big it is as well. It, this is quite a nice close-up image taken by Cassini. You can see the wave structure on the edge of the ring as well that that moon is gravitationally causing as it orbits around. Now, the interesting thing about these moons that are inside the rings is that you can use the gap to weigh the moon. So we have a spacecraft there. We can actually look, well, we did have a spacecraft there. We can now look at the moons. But if we couldn't see the moons, we could still work out the size of those moons by how wide that particular gap was. So you've got these two moons here. Got Pan on the left and Daphnis on the right. Now Pan is much bigger, and as you can see, it creates a lot wider gap there. And we can just use some fairly simple mathematics to work out the width of that gap and the moon that must have actually caused it. It's quite useful actually because we can use it to look at rings around exoplanets that we actually can't see in that greater detail, but we might be able to work out there's a gap. And we, you know, doing so, we might also be able to infer the size of a moon we can't actually see. So you can probably see that the waves caused on the ring by this particular moon, they're kind of offset or they're in different directions. And if you remember from our other short video on planetary rings, we have this Keplerian shear. So it means that any ring particles closer to the planet are orbiting faster than those further away, uh, as you can see by the kind of um, illustration on the right. So what that means is that as this moon is wandering around in the gap, it's causing these waves on the edge of the ring, on the actual gap itself. So it's pulling it around, it's making these waves, but because the inside of the ring is orbiting faster than the outside, it, the waves are actually kind of going away or in front of it, of the moon as it orbits, and on the outside they're traveling slower, so actually they're downstream of the moon. So it causes this kind of structure where closest to the planet they're in front of it and further away they're kind of behind the moon as it's on its orbit. Now if the moons themselves are not big enough they won't actually cause a gap in the ring so instead they cause what we would call a propeller shape and you can see a really nice one here and it's the same idea with the moons causing those waves. Keplerian shear means that you have one structure kind of in one direction and the other structure um, kind of tailing it behind in the other direction really. But when they're very small they just don't have enough mass or gravitational influence on the nearby ring to clear it out so they just distort it locally and we wouldn't necessarily call these moons maybe they would be called a moonlet instead. So instead of a gap you get this propeller like structure instead. And this is taken from above the ring and below the ring by Cassini and you can see you've got a really nice propeller shape there and again we might not be able to actually see the moon or the moon that's causing that because it's so small what we can do is look at the, the shape and size of the structure it's caused on the ring and then we can probably work out how big that particular object is and then finally we, you know we're going to have a look at the F ring so the F-ring sits just on the outer edge of the main ring. 
And it's a very interesting place because it's possibly one of the most dynamic places in the solar system. The ring structure changes on a matter of hours. It changes very quickly. And the reason for that is it has two small moons, Prometheus and Pandora, that orbit on either side of it, really. So Prometheus is inside the ring and, Prometheus and Pandora is actually on the outside. So if we have a little bit of a closer look, you can see Prometheus there just inside the ring and you've got Pandora on the outside. Now they basically shepherd that ring. They keep all the ring material in place, so it keeps it quite narrow. But also they themselves are not necessarily stationary, so they do wander around a little bit due to their orbits and they stir up the ring or the F ring so it's not a nice even structure. And if we have a look, these are some images taken at different times and you can see that the actual the main F ring is changing quite significantly over time. So it changes quite a lot due to the interactions with these nearby moons. Um, so thank you for watching. That was just a very short video on some of the moons that are actually inside the rings.